Standing together, I invite you to join me as we pray our calling for this feast of all saints. <clears throat> Almighty God, whose people are knit together in one holy church, in the mystical body of your Son, grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment, and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through your Son, Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we hear the good news of God.
I'd like you to stand together as we sing our gradual hymn 478. Almighty God, thy word is past. <coughs> So he was going to do this and go out and just 
ask people about the election and gather people's thoughts and questions. And I was thinking about him doing that uh, as we were approaching this weekend because I think if you did an MOS in Windsor or really anywhere in Canada on, say, Thursday or Friday last week, you said to them, so tell me about this weekend. The talk would be, of course, all about Halloween, right? right. And, and really, can you blame them? I mean, I remember seeing costumes on the and candy at Walmart in August. So this, this has been building up for a while. Um, and that's what really this weekend has been for many. But today is different for you and I. We are the church. We are Jesus' disciples. Today, we are blessed and we are able to gather today, this weekend, for something else. Today is a celebration of one of the oldest feast days in the church calendar, the Feast of All Saints. The early church commemorated the life and witness of the martyrs of the church because in the early days of the church, as history tells us, the church um, was, uh, was persecuted. So those that died were dying, literally dying for the church, and, and their names were commemorated uh, as the saints in those days. And then later on in history, of course, as the church became more of the accepted religion of the empire, it wasn't so much that people were dying for their faith as much as they were being remembered on all saints as uh, those people who set an example for their communities in their life of faith and in their walk of faith. And, and we've been observing all saints continuously since about the year 600. And we've been doing it in that way a lot of the ways. If you think about some of the saints, certainly there are those in the history of the church that have died for their faith, like St. Paul, we certainly remember, um, and, and others. But we also have saints that abound in our church and in our culture that we're quite aware of, people like uh, Mother Teresa and, and that sort of thing, um, that, have, that have offered a wonderful picture of a walk with Jesus, it's something to hold up for us. But today we're going to be taking a moment and we're going to be remembering our loved ones, those that have gone before us, the saints, the saints that are now in the light. This is always, for me anyway, a very emotional service. And it can be a difficult one too. When we take time to um, come together on this day and remember and name our loved ones that are so close to our hearts that we see no longer. But today also as we gather on this Saint, on this All Saints Day can be a blessing for us as well. And that blessing comes when we intentionally today come into this holy space and bring before God a sad part of our shared experience as human beings. And we bring that into this holy space today and we lay it before God and God washes that sadness with holiness. It's a powerful thing for us. All Saints Day is important because it is the one church day set aside during the year for you and I to do something that a lot of the times we don't, and that is to tend to our grief. We experience grief on some days of the church through the year, Good Friday and Holy Saturday, but that grief is for the suffering of Christ. All Saints Day for us is remembering the people we loved who were important to us, who made an impact on our lives, and who have left us. <coughs> is for us. <clears throat> grief is one of life's most powerful human experiences, and grief can also be very lonely. Those of us who have experienced loss know what it's like to, to wake up the morning after the death of a loved one and simply be horrible, and how the sun can come up another day, and the earth continues to turn, and people just seem to be going about their daily business when our worlds have completely been turned upside down. We are grateful for the love and concern of friends and colleagues and what they've shown, but at the same time, it's strange to realize that they and the rest of the world just keep going about their daily routines. It is a realization that all of us have had at some time or another that our personal battles, our personal tragedies and defeats are not shared on the same level with the rest of the world. But our grief doesn't, does matter today, especially in this place, on All Saints Day in God's Holy Church. The losses that we have had over the years, they come front and center for us today, and we lay them here on holy ground for all to hear. On All Saints Day, our grief is no longer lonely. It is not in isolation, but we gather in the sanctuary and we let our grief bind us together in a new and very powerful way. All Saints Day is important and is an important ministry to us in our loss because it helps us remember that the place of mourning in a bit of a rhythm. 
year after year, every November the 1st. I'm thankful for a past mentor of mine who once compared this day on November 1st to when the green and life of summer start to slowly die and they go into a, a winter's rest all around us. We're starting to experience that outside right now. In the same way, we also bring up the pain of loss on purpose. And we do it in this rhythm every year after year. And each year that we revisit our loss, our pain can soften. It loses a bit of its sharpness and it begins to go into its own form of winter's rest. Every time we name our loved ones among the saints, we honor not only their lives, but our own long battle with memories that are both joyful and difficult. And it is so important to honor these memories today. Most of our departed loved ones had a funeral or some form of commemoration, but the funeral happens right after the loss, and we all know how chaotic and complicated that can be. Lots of practical circumstances that we're trying to manage in the moment, and if you've lost someone close to you, um, you probably remember the days of the immediate aftermath is a bit of a haze, right? They're very confusing. There are hundreds of details to attend to. Frankly, it is often not a time to treasure the memory of our departed loved ones. I know through my experience of being with people in those times that many grieving families kind of float through the funeral. They're disconnected and they're in a bit of shock. And it's not until later that the reality of it really starts to sense. And this, my friends, is where All Saints Day becomes a blessing for us. Because today, just for this time together, there is no chaos. There are no arrangements for you to make. There's no being singled out to sit in front or at the back of the church or to find the right suit or dress or find the right directions to get to where we need to be. We are all in this space together. And the ones we are remembering are long settled in to their eternal rest. It's the chance to be private about our grief today, but taking out our memories in the quiet of our hearts, turning them over inside one by one, taking our time to remember and to reflect. But we all enter that sheltered and quiet space of our hearts together in this same time and in this same place with each other. Today, as you bring up the faces of your loved ones before your mind's eye and cherish the chance to do so peacefully and uninterrupted. Know that the person in the pew next to you or in front or behind is doing the same. Even if a specific name is not on our printed out list today, your brother or sister in Christ is recalling someone they love but see no longer. We together enter into the valley of the shadow of death and we walk through it in unity. We are not but perhaps the greatest blessing of all this day is when we know that there is someone else who is in solidarity with us in our grief. And that is Jesus. In our Gospel reading today, we see Jesus in the exact situation that we have faced in our lives, the inevitable but painful death of one that he loved. Lazarus was sick, they all knew he may die, but even Jesus can't quite believe it at first. He doesn't want to believe it. He asks, has he been buried? Where have they laid him anywhere? Where have they laid him? Hoping maybe the message has gotten twisted along the way. Maybe he's actually not dead or, or just still sick. Where have you laid him? They said, Lord, come and see. And when Jesus sees the reality in that moment, Jesus' human experience is synced with yours and with mine and hears the most powerful words in all the Gospels. Jesus began to weep. Jesus had seen so much pain in his lifetime and he took it on so bravely. He saw the sufferings of his people crushed under the imperial rule of Rome, yet he doesn't cry. He stands on a mountain to see 5,000 hungry and poor on a hillside needing to be fed, yet he doesn't cry. He sees people tormented by demons bleeding or paralyzed or diseased for years and he doesn't cry. He continues his ministry and he cares for them. But here at the last, he breaks for the simple everyday beloved friend who is gone. 
There was nothing grand or dramatic in Lazarus' death. One of his best friends is sick and dies. Yet Jesus weeps. And so perhaps on this day of letting our heartache step out into the open on this holy ground, we can be in solidarity with our Lord as much as he is with us in our difficulties. He always bears the burden for us. Maybe today we can say, Jesus, we understand how you feel. We're sorry you have lost your friend. We love you. Come and be with us for a while. We'll all be in this together. That's the unique blessing of today. We know in the story that Jesus brought his friend back. Just as on the final day, we will be brought back to life by him to live with him, to be in him. But John's Gospel show tells us today how Jesus raised Lazarus up to a new life, how he brought him back from the dead. Jesus cried out, Lazarus, come out. Jesus called out his name. Lazarus, come out. Today, you and me are doing the same thing. We are calling out the names of the ones we love who have passed on, and in doing so, they are resurrected in our hearts. The life they shared with us, the love they gave us, the gifts they shared with us and with each other that we remember, that made them so unique, all of those are made known again in our hearts. In naming these saints today in this holy place, we are recalling not only their lives, but the life that they gave to the world, and through us, the life that can continue to be given to the world, so that we can continue to share life with others. And today, across the entire church, from here in Windsor, throughout our diocese of Huron, across the Anglican Church of Canada, and around the world, crossing denominational lines, as the communion of saints remembers and calls out those who have gone before, life is being given and life is being honored. Life is being resurrected. Life is being given again to God's world. Jesus commanded those around him that faithful day to do something. Something that becomes even more powerful for us today, especially today on All Saints Day. John's Gospel tells us that after Lazarus' resurrection, Jesus says to his followers, Unbind him. Unbind him. Let him go. You see, my friends, life that is created and given by God cannot and should not be bound or chained even in an earthly grave. The holy and sacred life that God's Spirit breathed into the world and creation conquers death. It is at the very heart of our Christian faith because Christ died for us and was risen again. We may have new life. That life continues. That divine life is meant to be unbound, to let go into the world through our lives and into God's creation so that there may be healing. There may be peace and love in God's world. The life your loved one shared with you and with others, all that was important to them, everything you need about them, by naming them today is unbound. It's let go. As we call out their names, either aloud or silently in our hearts, and we remember them. That is the greatest blessing of this holy day together. And so as we gather in thanksgiving, we give thanks to God for all the saints in life. Thanks be to God for all who in life and death continue to glorify God, and who continue to give to us and to the world. Thanks be to God for this All Saints Day, a day you and I have been given to celebrate holy sanctified and everlasting life. For that and his many blessings, we say, thanks be to God.
At this time, I invite you to join me in the prayer of God that you will see on your screens as we pray. We will exalt you, O God our King. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. and brothers cleansed in the blood of the Lamb and in one communion with all the saints of every time and place. Let us offer our prayers to the God who loves us, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. For the Holy Church of God throughout the world, that the Lord may confirm it in faith, sustain it in hope, and deepen its communion and charity. Let us pray to the Lord. Peace. 